Hello. This is a UVW 1800p Betacam SP recorder. Uh, it's my favourite machine of this series. There are four in the series and I'll explain a little bit about what they all do shortly. This one I had to retire a few weeks ago because it's behaving as though the heads are worn out or the video head uh, for the colour pickup is either worn out or contaminated but it could be an electronic fault. I'd like to get this machine going again. Now, the bottom of the range machine is a player, 1200p. I have one of those, and that is kind of taking this machine's place for the time being. That doesn't record, so you don't get the VU meters, which are quite useful, even if you're only using it as a player. And it only has a simplified circuit for the time-based corrector. It's not a true time-based corrector. There may be other differences as well, I'm not certain. The model above that is a very rare 1400p which is a player only with a full digital time base corrector. Never seen one of those. Then the model above that is a 1600, which has the basic time base corrector substitute again, but is a recorder. And I have one of those and it has a blown, there's a faulty regulator in behind this VU meter that has destroyed the front panel electronics. So, that's possibly a part supplier to this, but I wouldn't want this to be a part supplier to that. Uh, that only has the not real time base corrector. And then this is the 1800p with recording and full time base corrector. So this is one I'd really like to fix. Let me demonstrate again what the fault is. Ordinarily, if you see that on a Betacam SP machine, you'll just put head cleaner tape in and it'll fix itself. But that's not the case in this case. I've tried the head cleaner tape and it's got us nowhere. So we seem to have an actual fault. Now, if this was uh, a normal domestic machine, Beta VHS, and I had a problem where I suspected the heads were either damaged or contaminated, well, a few things. I would look at them under a microscope, which is something I may be able to do if I can get the microscope in there. But the other thing you can do is set an oscilloscope up to look at the RF output from the video heads. Not something I've ever done with this sort of machine. Maybe I can do it, look at the service manual. So there's another possible approach. Okay, let's take the lid off and uh, see what we're looking at. And being a component format, there are separate heads for Chroma and Luma. There's also going to be flying arrays heads in there. So there are a lot of heads on that head drum. Can we set ourselves up so that we can see them under a microscope? Um, I'm not certain we can, but uh, I might have to take the deck out. Maybe I can if I remove the deck. Let's have a look. Rightly or wrongly, I'm starting by taking the cassette carriage out of the way. You know, with the deck, with the um, carriage out of the way, I reckon there's a chance I can get the um, microscope in to look at the head. So I'll see if I can do that, and then we can all have a close look at them. Okay, that's uh, working fairly well actually. So if I can just demonstrate what we have here. We're looking at one of the many heads on this drum. I have a head cleaner stick in front of me here. Uh, this one then, the, f the front face is the important bit, is where actually the recording is done. So we can see the coils on the top and this front face here which I'm just about to touch with the head cleaner stick. That's that shiny, smooth face there. When it's shiny like that, you've got good reflections in it, that is clean and in good order. So there is no fault with that head. I'm going to move the head anti-clockwise. It doesn't matter which way I go. I'll move around to the next head tip. Again, I think we're looking at clean head faces there, but I'll give it a very gentle wipe while I'm here. I've now got fibre from the head cleaner stick, that's not ideal. Right, I think we've got rid of that. Right, move to the next head. Okay, clean that again. Not seeing any contamination on it. Keep going round. Mm, 
Next head tip, again it looks clean. Okay, round a bit more. Maybe you can get the head to glisten like that. It's so much easier to see in real life than it is on the camera, unfortunately. But that glistening, when it shines, you can really see the detail of the head tip and confirm that you've got it completely clear. This applies to all video heads. If you can get that glisten, you can really, really see the detail of the video head. You can see it quite clearly there. You can see the head gap across the middle there. See it? I'll try to let it go. There we are. So just in front of the windings, you can actually see the head gap. Or the junction for the head gap, if you like. I mean, look how fine the head gap is on that. See that tiny little line there? That's a head gap. Oh, it's great when you can get it to shine like this. This is perfect lighting. You can even see the azimuths, the different azimuths of the different heads. You see how that azimuth slopes one way and that slopes the other way. See? Azimuth sloping in one direction there and then a few degrees in the other direction there. So it really is just about the best view you will ever get of a video head right there. And what we can say from all this is whatever's wrong with this machine, dirty heads is not it. So um, I'm going to put the carriage back and we'll test the machine again and if it doesn't work, we can assume that one of these heads is either worn out, which I think is unlikely, but, you know, it's possible, or there's a fault somewhere, such that the signal is not getting to the boards, uh, the amplifier boards, or there's a fault on an amplifier board. Uh, right, OK, let's um, put the carriage in and see what happens. I'll just uh, read back the hours meter for the heads, see how old they are. Switching over to the output which has the superimposed uh, information on it. Right, press the hours meter. So it's times 10 for all these hours. And probably what we're interested in is uh, tape running. So we press uh, hours meter. And I think the one we're interested in really is uh, tape running T3 so it's got 1680 hours which doesn't seem that high um, it, it's considerable but not hopefully enough to warn the heads out so I'm not really believing that the heads are worn out though they could have come to some terrible disaster as a result of hitting a bad tape so most likely we're looking at uh, an electronic fault. We do have the UVW 1600, which may have the same video heads. And you'd say, well, why don't I try swapping heads over? But I believe, looking at the manual, that swapping the video heads over is non-trivial. It requires a lot of setup. Uh, it might be possible, however, to swap the entire deck over and that's something I will consider but uh, let's see if we can uh, do some more investigation first can we get to the FM envelopes from the heads and what sort of FM envelope should we get on a beta cam machine well there is a test point here TP301 which is chroma RF output I can hook an, hook an oscilloscope to that. I'd got um, an oscilloscope actually, which is a PC based one, but I think the frequencies may be a little high for this, so uh, I will use my proper Tektronix scope. Let's see what signal we have on that uh, RF output, chroma RF output.
Doesn't make any sense at all, that. Let's use a virtual oscilloscope, see what we get. Okay, I've set up the uh, PC oscilloscope to trigger on a signal which actually says first frame on the next board over, which I think is uh, hopefully okay for us to use as a trigger, and then we can look at the output from the chroma heads. And we're getting high output, low output, high output, low output, which is saying good head, bad head, alternately. So it's looking like the video heads themselves, or some part of the processing on this board VP43, uh, which does the uh, the chroma amplifier. So there it is. It looks like the heads are shot. That's a real nuisance. And I've done some research in the service manual. It turns out that though the two player models, the 1200 and 1400, share the same heads as each other, the 14, the 16 and the 18 recorders don't share the same heads. So I can't borrow the heads and deck out the 1600. Actually years ago I think I bought an 1800 uh, scrap deck, just the mechanism itself, and chucked it in my storeroom just in case I needed it one day. Uh, and I've been looking for it ever since and I've sent my son Alex out there to have a look for it, but uh, nah, I don't think we're going to find that. So uh, we're a little bit stuck unless I can get some spare parts. So, hello Found Alex. It. Oh, oh look what we've got here. A complete scrap deck. Well, let's see if it's the right model. But uh, this looks promising. Well done, Alex. Thank you. You're welcome. Right, let's see what we have here. So it appears to be a whole deck and a cassette carriage, which we're not going to need, I don't believe. So put that to one side. This also gives us a chance to look what's involved in uh, taking the deck out. So we can see connectors from a head assembly at the top here. Connectors from lower down, some more connectors at the back. This is back to front at the moment. Let's have a look at the other side. The multi way connector that goes to the carriage. And some more connectors underneath. So there's quite a lot to it. Would it be simpler to swap over the entire head drum, upper and lower head drum, or would that require realignment of the deck anyway? Or could we get away with just swapping out the uh, upper drum? How hard would that be? I'm wondering what would be involved in just uh, swapping out the upper head drum anyway, uh, putting the alignment issues aside. Uh, is that easy enough to just change and try? It would at the very least help us to debug our problem. Is it just a case of undo these two screws and lift the drum up? Well since this one is scrap I'm going to give it a shot I think. I think first I'll just briefly inspect these heads under the microscope in case anything's smashed. I'm wasting my time. Well my brief check seemed to show that the uh, heads are all intact on here so let's see if we can take them off easily what happens here if these are all soldered on here and this comes off without that then presumably I've got to desolder all those wires yes I've got to desolder those wires and then I can just lift the drum off okay that's not that hard I think I should just be able to lift the heads off now. Slightly colliding with this. Okay, to sort of ease it past this head. I'm looking for alignment marks to tell you which way around it goes. 
I don't see any so it's probably just a case of making sure you get the colors lined up properly okay same process on this one so I'm about to take the drum out I've got a pair of white and a pair of red white at the top red at the bottom so I'm going to make sure that when I put the other drum in it's the same way around am I going to collide with the audio head again very likely not so bad actually on that one so white pair there red pair there I'm going to put them down the same way around being careful not to clob any head tips as we go past the audio control head okay that appears to be correct I've got the WW there and RR there let's fit the screws and then do the soldering and see where we are so it might be that in theory you have to do a full deck realignment but in practice maybe not so much we also don't know anything about these heads they could be worn out but it's fairly unlikely I think that it would just have one worn out chroma head so I would expect the symptoms to change if the heads are indeed shot okay everything is soldered up shall we give it a whirl Right, well, we had nothing to lose anyway, so uh, let's see how we are. Press play. And it's immediately obvious that though these heads are clogging a little, they've been sat in a cold place for a long time, that the problem has fundamentally gone away. I think uh, maybe the heads could use a clean, and maybe we could try a better tape. because we are clogging sometimes okay let's clean the heads and try a different tape I'm hearing something as I'm cleaning the heads I can hear a sort of friction noise between my head stick and the head drum once per rotation so I think maybe it's got a little bit of contamination on the head drum uh, possibly a bit of corrosion okay I'm going to just leave it playing some tapes for a while and see if it improves I can see that there's disturbance at the bottom at the top of the picture and if I put my finger on one of the input guides and very very slightly push the tape down then that disturbance clears up so it does imply that the um, alignment has shifted slightly on this head drum so maybe I need to fine tweak one of the tape guides and I should really do that again looking at the uh, FM envelopes if I can okay I'll tell you what I found I found the proper switch signal on this board it's labeled YSW so that's the head switching signal you can see on the red channel there on the uh, oscilloscope and I'm using YRF output uh, on test point here which is the luminance signal uh, and I could indeed look at the chroma as well but the, s the results are pretty similar I think that uh, it's a little better since I've made a very very slight adjustment to the input guide there but fundamentally it's not great and I think these heads are well past their best uh, I'm sure there will be an alignment procedure in the manual but it's fundamentally going to involve adjusting the input and output guides so here I've got the oscilloscope hooked up to the Luma output head and it's not great from what I can see so I'm getting much better results on the TV than I was with the original heads and I've made a small adjustment to the input guide which has improved it very slightly more but fundamentally I believe that these heads are well worn 
especially the luminance heads in this case. So we're not getting the big chroma dropout we had before. Yeah, I think those heads are tired. I know there will be a full alignment procedure in the manual, but in the end, all you can do is adjust the input and output guides, really, and uh, it's not going to make a huge difference. These heads are just not giving us very good output. I can also feel the actual mechanism. I can feel shuddering once per head revolution due to the uh, contamination on the head drum as it drags on the tape slightly. That's making the time base corrector work harder too. So the heads from the scrap deck just weren't good enough, but it was at least okay to prove the point that the heads were the fault on the machine in the first place. When I had the other heads in there, the colour was okay-ish, uh, and I fine tweaked the input guide a tiny fraction uh, on the, the nut on the input guide and was able to improve things, but it still wasn't really good enough. Uh, so those heads are obviously worn out. So I would be stuck, but you know, I have the UVW 1600P, and when I looked up the service manual, it became apparent that the difference between the 1600p heads and the 1800p heads is that the 1600p's lack flying arrays heads. That's not actually that important to me at the moment. Right now I just wanted to be able to play and record. So let's see if we can fit the heads from the 1600. So I went into the loft and got the heads from the 1600 and the difference is that it lacks these flying arrays heads. They're the ones that have got the pair of white or red wires. But the video heads themselves appear to be the same. So what would happen if I fitted the 1600p heads into this 800p? Would I get good play and record? I think it's worth a try, isn't it? Bearing in mind that my the scrap 1600 I had, I don't really know the condition of the heads in that either, but I believe it had been a working machine. So, before it had a blow up on the front panel. So let's uh, try our tape. Oh, oh yep, yeah, heads clogging and clearing bit by bit. Again it seems quite poor at the top. I'm going to fine tweak the input guide again. I have to say I got better results on the Tektronics um, probably due to much better bandwidth on this oscilloscope so um, I'm going to use that to see if I can fine tweak the alignment. So this is looking at the channel one's got the uh, trigger, channel two has got the uh, YRF signal, test point 103. Right there, it's well misaligned, so you can see the start of the sweep has got very low RF output. Now if you look at it, it's strange. It's uh, sort of oscillating between okay and not okay, then okay, then not okay. See that? Isn't that odd? How it's fading in and out. And the response I'm seeing on the TV screen is pretty similar. It's okay and then not okay. Your picture's certainly uh, not acceptable. Oh dear. Right, since I didn't get the results I wanted from the UVW 1600 heads, I'm going to take them out ready to refit to that machine. Then I need to decide which of the sets of heads are best for this machine. I might, might retry the original ones uh, or leave in the ones uh, from the scrap deck, but I think they're all shot to be honest. Okay, let's get these out anyway. I'm going to... Um, look at these under the microscope, um, looking at the tips. I'm going to um, have a look under the microscope at these heads and see if we can detect any visible wear. I'm not going to worry about the flying arrays heads, that's these, because they're not relevant. So what do you think? Is that a worn head? 
is four to look at? I would say no. In my humble opinion, that head is not worn out. It's not like the wear is heading back towards the uh, windings. Next one. Again, no, I would have said. That doesn't look worn. Let's go over to the other pair. It, you know, this is the flying arrays head. We're not too worried about that. It's very dirty. Over to the other pair. No visible wear, is there? And then finally this one. That one's the one that looks closest. But still, no, I wouldn't have said that's worn out. I might be missing the point. And then over to the other flying arrays head. Again, quite dirty. Just not seeing a fault there. Quick continuity check on them all. This is where we could use a head tester. All heads meter out okay. Let's uh, refit that to the machine. And we're right back to... Uh, essentially no chroma uh, from one of the heads. If I apply a bit of extra back tension, the input guide with my finger, no, I can never bring that back. So what we can safely say is that the original heads in this machine are indeed shot totally because there's no way of getting chroma to work properly on those. But the uh, second-hand heads from the scrap deck have two faults. <clears throat> as well as potentially being very badly worn, there's too much contamination on the drum. Parts of it are smooth. And parts of it are sticky from poor storage. So... I couldn't use that anyway. And then finally the heads from the 1600 appear to be just plain worn. Uh, we could look at them under the microscope too, I suppose. Let's do that briefly. So these are the 1600p heads, no flying arrays heads on these. And there appears to be some wear apparently on this. Nothing terribly obvious. I remember the last one. Nothing terribly obvious, is there? And let's look at the head tips the other way. Nothing obviously wrong with that one. Again, nothing obvious. Clip it around to the other side. A little contamination on that one, perhaps. And that may be enough to cause a problem. You see that tiny bit of contamination there? Enough to be a problem? Hmm. You'd have expect that to clear. So we'll stop there. What I really need is a known good set of these video heads model DBR-40, if anybody has any. Uh, what's your experience if you've ever changed these? Do you normally need to realign the tape path? Or they so such high precision that in general, you just need to change your drum and it's good. Now, one of the things to bear in mind here is what's caused this. The fault happened quite suddenly. I put a bad tape in, it was a known bad tape. Uh, it did have mold and I'd have to repair it. And since then, we lost chroma on one of the heads. So I suspect that tape took away a little bit of the tape surface, head surface, and has, has worn it out. Uh, but if you can think of any other possible causes, uh, let me know. I mean, it's possible that more back tension would help. When I applied a bit of back tension with my finger, it did seem to improve things slightly, but I think that's working around the problem, not fixing it. So I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future, and very likely return to this video recorder in the future. Bye for now. <laughs>